let's start with a very simple clipping mask. So I've got a shape here. Um, let's go with a circle. So I'm going to come over to my toolbar here, select the ellipse tool. I'm going to make sure I've got a white fill and a black stroke on so that I can see my mask. And I'm just going to draw out a very simple circle. Use the selection tool. Now, it's important to remember anything you draw out in Illustrator, anything at all can become a clipping mask. It's just all down to the order you put them in. And it's important to remember that the clipping mask needs to be on top of all the other objects you want within the mask. So right now, this is on top. So for example, if I went to range center back right now, that would be at the bottom. So I need this on top of this here to create the mask. So if I right click again, arrange, bring to front, now this is gonna become the mask. So I'm gonna hold these two over, highlight, right click, make clipping mask. And there you go, that's inside the mask now. Now, if I wanted to make changes to this, because at the moment, if I try and move these, it moves them together. So if I go back, right click, and go to isolate, select the clipping mask, I can then go in then and address the clipping mask as such. So I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. You can see I can move it. I can kind of do whatever I want with it really. And then when I'm happy with it, then I can come out. Now, if I highlight these again, right click, release clipping mask, that then releases both of these. And you'll see that the original mask will have lost its fill and stroke. So if you want to bring that back, you just kind of go back in and click these and to bring, it, to bring them back. Okay, so it's important to remember, as I said before, that anything can become a mask. So we can make more complex masks than this. So if I delete this, uh, let's just use, say, the pencil tool. I'll just draw out a very simple wiggly shape like this. Connect that together. Let's add a fill to that so we can see. Bring this over the top of here. Click and drag. Make clipping mask, same principle yet again. This is now my mask. And if I wanna isolate it, isolate clipping, select the clipping mask, and I can do this, change it accordingly. And then if I wanna release it, I press release clipping mask. And then there's my original clipping mask, add a stroke and fill to see what it is. So this is just done with two simple shapes. If you've got multiple shapes to work with, let's come to our next thing here. Absolutely fine, same principle yet again. You see here, I've got four uh, circles within um, this square. Now I can group these together if I want by pressing group, but the good thing is the mask will understand that these elements want to go into the top layer. So again, let's just say I go in with a rounded rectangle tool this time. So let's add my white fill black stroke. So this is gonna be my mask, draw this over the top. As such, there you go. I've got my mask here, selection tool to release it. Remember now, I want this on the top, which it already is. And if I highlight all these, right click, make clipping mask, there you go. And then if I go into isolate select a clipping mask, I can then address the clipping mask as such. And I can move it. I can change it, I can do whatever I want to it, and when I'm happy with it then, I can come out as such. Highlight these, right click, release clipping mask, and there you go. There's my original mask, add a stroke of fill, and there it is there. So you can do this on one layer, you can also do this with multiple pieces of artwork at the same time. Now what happens if you wanna have a more complex mask with multiple shapes? Well, again, that's very straightforward. So. Let's come to my last one here, zoom in here. Now, say for example, we want a mask over the top of this that is a more complex shape. So let's just say we use my ellipse tool and we want to create a shape as such. So if I grab one here and then I hold out, drag that out to search, and then maybe then add a third one here. So this is what I want my mask to be, and I want that to go over the top of that. So what I need to do now, I need to use the Pathfinder panel to connect these three together to then create a flat layer that becomes my mask. So all I need to do, click these three, hold shift. So these are the three now I want my mask to be. 
What I want to do then, if I come to my Pathfinder, and if you can't find it, go to Window Pathfinder, and you'll bring that up. And then I'm going to use the Unite option, and I'm going to hold Alt, click that. Now I've got these three shapes here, as you can see. This now has become my mask. If I hold this over the top, highlight everything here, right click, make clipping mask, and there you go. Now this has come inside the mask. And same principle as before. If I want to isolate it, right click it. And now I can address the mask in any way I want. I can change the size. I can use the direct selection tool if I want to change the anchor points, change the shape of this. Do whatever I want accordingly. And then when I'm happy, then I can come out of isolation mode and I've got my mask there. And if I highlight these as before, release clipping mask, there you go. And then I've got my original mask here and then put that back on. And there you have it. So you've got your original mask there. You can put that to the side or make a duplicate. So Clipping masks are very straightforward to do in Illustrator. You just need to be aware of the arrangement and making sure that if you've got multiple layers within your mask, that you unite and connect that shape in some way so that this becomes one shape um, and you can use that then over multiple layers. So that's how you use clipping masks in Illustrator. I hope that was a helpful tutorial. Please subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial. Give me ideas for future tutorials and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.